In this video, we'll be talking about therapeutic antibodies. So antibodies can also be used as therapeutic agent for many autoimmune disorders and many other disorders. So in this video, we would take a quick look at that. So the first antibody that we are going to take a look is basically adilumumab and infliximab. The name seems to be complicated, but they are basically antibodies against the soluble TNF alpha. So TNF alpha is an inflammatory mediator, different cell types such as um, dendritic cells, neutrophil, macrophages, all of them secrete inflammatory mediators. Among them, TNF alpha is one of, one of the major one. So this is a pro-inflammatory cytokine underlying pathology of many disease. So that is why by blocking that particular TNF alpha can provide relief. And this could be used in several diseases like inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, and then psoriasis. So let's talk about the rheumatoid arthritis context. So rheumatoid arthritis simply means severe pain and inflammation in the joints due to autoimmune attack. At any point you want to learn more about this, the i button would give you the video link. So in rheumatoid arthritis, what happens is there are several cytokines which are produced by T cells, dendritic cells, macrophages that act upon the cells of the joint. And that lead to huge problem. Inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin 1, 6 and TNF alpha are involved. So that is why in this context, if TNF alpha is masked by the antibodies like adalumumab and infliximab, that would give relief. Same goes for psoriasis. It's an autoimmune condition with uh, <coughs> well demarcated erythematous uh, rashes on the body with silvery scale. So in this case also, it is known that the autoreactive T cells are underlying this disease situation. So T cells become overreacting and triggering inflammatory response and lead to a problem in the skin cells. Now there are several cytokines which are underlying these disease, such as interleukin 17, interleukin 23 and 12, all of them are broadly categorized as pro-inflammatory. So one can imagine biologically if each of these cytokines can be blocked by one dedicated antibody or different antibody cocktail, then there could be a treatment angle, right? Indeed. So these pro-inflammatory cytokines are masked by several uh, monoclonal antibodies such as Ixikizumab and then Sekun, uh, Sekuni, Sekukinumab. These names are really complicated. But anyway, these particular antibodies can bind to interleukin 17 and block its activity. There are also Ustekinumab that binds to IL-12. There are also antibodies such as Guselukumab that binds to IL-23. And all these can be used for the treatment of psoriasis. Now, many of these can also be used in context of multiple sclerosis. In multiple sclerosis, what happens is that um, there are multiple scars all across the central nervous system in the brain and the spinal cord. So the cells which protect the uh, neurons and help them to form the myelin sheath along the axons, the oligodendrocyte, they are getting affected. So basically the myelin sheath is getting affected in these neurons, changing the conduction velocity. Cells like Th17 cells secreting interleukin 17 and Th1 cells are involved or underlying these conditions. So natalizumab is one of the treatment for this. So it turns out that generally autoreactive T cells are not produced because there is central and peripheral tolerance. Again, if you don't know that, click on the I button. But they are preventing mechanism by which autoreactive T cell can harm our own body. But in case of multiple sclerosis, these T cells can infiltrate the blood brain barrier. They can now cross the blood and ultimately they can innervate the brain. So once they are inside the brain, it's dangerous. But anyway, they use integrin, an integrin receptor mediated interaction to get in. So obviously one can imagine if somebody generates an antibody against these integrins present on the reactive T cell surface, then T cell would not be able to cross the blood brain barrier. 
exactly natalizumab does that that is why it's a good treatment in case, in context of multiple sclerosis so now we talk about uh, denozumab this is used for the treatment of osteoporosis so in osteoporosis what happens is the bones become spongy and bone density decreases now it, what happens is in order for bone to be degraded there are osteoclastic activity that should increase now osteoclast has rank receptors and rank ligand either soluble form or membrane bound form can respond can allow a rank and rankle signaling and this helps the osteoclastic activity to prevail now if somebody blocks this rank ligand or the soluble rank ligands with denozumab then this signaling would be interrupted and osteoclastic activity would be decreased so bone erosion can be actually slowed down so denozumab helps to make the bones dense anyway we know there are several antibodies there are several cell types which are associated with uh, allergy if you don't know what is allergy or mast cells click on the i button but anyway in case of allergies what happens ige are the key antibodies which bind to the fc receptors on the mast cells help them to degranulate secrete histamine and that cause all the allergic manifestations so the antibody called omalizumab actually binds to the fc region of ige antibody and prevent them to bind to the fc receptor by doing that it prevents the mast cell activation and degranulation of the mast cell so that is why it is a potent medication so it is used uh, for refractory allergic asthma now then we talk about emicizumab so this emicizumab is used in the treatment of hemophilia so this recognize factor 9a and 10 so basically generally what happens in hemophilia the blood clotting uh, cascade goes wrong and in this case this particular antibody triggers the factors uh, 9a and 10 and help to maintain these cascades activity and thereby again helping the patient to get a blood clotted so then we talk about trastuzumab trastuzumab which is basically known as herceptin is an antibody against her2 receptor so basically it is underlying the treatment of uh, breast cancer so the her2 positive breast cancer has the her2 receptor which is human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 anyway these receptor mediated signaling can lead to over proliferation of the cells in the breast that leads to cancer so in this particular antibody it can bind to these particular receptors her2 receptors and prevent the her2 receptor mediated endogenous signaling and thereby preventing proliferation that is how trastuzumab a monoclonal antibody is a potent uh, therapeutic agent for her2 positive breast cancers so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe you can get notes and flashcards in our facebook and instagram page So see you in the next video.